the baptism of the Lord that we celebrate today is an event narrated by all the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The reason why all three narrate this incident is because they all believed that it was the foundational experience in the life and mission of Jesus. It was at his baptism that Jesus received the mandate from God. It was after his baptism that he embarked on the mission. This is why we need to understand what happened at the baptism of Jesus, what mission he received from God, and how he would accomplish that mission. In the Gospel of Mark, there are three events which occur at the baptism of Jesus. As soon as Jesus is baptized, the heavens open. Mark uses the Greek verb schizomenos to show that the heavens were rent open. In Isaiah chapter 64, verse 1, Isaiah is pleading with God to rend open the heavens and come down one last time to save the world. Mark is saying by using this verb rent open that the plea of Isaiah, the prayer of Isaiah is answered in the baptism of Jesus. This is why Mark is very specific about the heavens being rent open at the baptism of Jesus. That's the first event which occurs. The second event is the spirit comes on Jesus as a dove. The reason why Mark mentions that the spirit came as a dove is to show the tangible and physical experience which Jesus has. He experiences the spirit of God coming on him, so he becomes the carrier of the spirit. He becomes the communicator of the spirit. He becomes the one who will give the spirit to anyone who opens their hearts and minds to the promptings of God's spirit. And the third event, the climax at the baptism of Jesus, is the voice from heaven speaks. And the voice issues an invitation to Jesus. And this invitation is issued through the combination of two Old Testament texts. This is what the voice says. You are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. You are my beloved son. The first part of the quotation is from Psalm 2, verse 7. In you, I am well pleased, or in you, my soul delights, is from Isaiah 42, 1. What is the meaning of the combination of these two Old Testament texts in the invitation that is given to Jesus? Psalm 2 is a coronation psalm, a psalm that was sung when the king was ascending the throne. So it has to do with kingship, it has to do with authority, it has to do with the crown of gold. Isaiah 42 verse 1 is the first of the four suffering servant songs of Isaiah. In you my soul delights, or in you I am well pleased. This is how Isaiah 42 1 begins. Behold my servant, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. So Isaiah 42 has to do with servanthood, has to do with slaveship, has to do with giving and service, has to do with a crown of thorns. 
it might seem on the one hand that this is a double invitation, but really it is one invitation because the invitation through Psalm 2 verse 7 and Isaiah 42 verse 1 is to be king servant. To be servant king. To be king who becomes king by being servant. To be king who becomes king only by being servant. There is no other way. This is why Mark is very specific that Jesus sees the heavens open. He sees the heavens rent open. He sees the spirit come upon him as a dove and he hears the voice. In the second reading of today, Peter tells us in a very beautiful summary of the life and mission of Jesus, how Jesus did this. Then Peter summarizes the life of Jesus, not by talking about his extraordinary deeds, not by talking about his miracles, not by talking about his eloquence in word, but Peter simply says this. You have heard about Jesus of Nazareth, how he went about doing good and cleansing, healing everyone who was possessed in any way. In a summary form, this is what Isaiah in the first reading of today says that the suffering servant would do. The suffering servant would not come in authority. The suffering servant would not come to dominate. The suffering servant would not come in anger. The suffering servant would not come on a horse. The suffering servant would come as a helpless child. The suffering servant would come and suffer along with suffering humanity. In our present times, the baptism of the Lord is extremely relevant and important for us. Like Jesus, we are also issued an invitation. And the invitation that Jesus received was that even when it was difficult, he would continue to do the will of God. These are challenging times. These are difficult times. These are times when we really cannot understand God's plan and yet we hear the voice say to us, you are my beloved son, you are my beloved daughter, you are my beloved child, in you my soul delights, in you I am well pleased. Jesus heard this invitation and recognized it as an invitation not merely to be king, not merely to be son, but he realized that it was an invitation to be king and son by being slave and servant. The same invitation is issued to us today when God tells each one of us that we are beloved son, beloved daughter, and God is pleased in us. So he is inviting us to be king servant, to be queen servant, to be king or queen who will become king or queen, but by being servant. Jesus fulfilled this mission according to Peter in the second reading of today by doing good. And the reason why Jesus could do good, because he was good from within. So we are invited on this baptism of the Lord, to also imitate Jesus in his mission 
to continue that mission which he inaugurated over 2,000 years ago, in which he healed everyone who was possessed of any kind of negative. He did this not only through his words, not only through his exorcisms, but through the kind of person that he was. Because he was good, he could do good. Because he had learned to subdue the negatives in his own life, he could remove those from the lives of others. Are we up to the challenge? Are we up to this invitation which God keeps giving us and by telling us that we are beloved son, we are beloved daughter, and in us, God is well pleased. How beautiful it would be if at the end of the day in our examination of our consciousness, we could say about ourselves, we went about doing good today and making whole all those who came to us in their need. I pray that each one of us will be able to do this. Amen.